Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabat fillah A question came up From some of Ahlul Khair wa Sunnah Min Ahli Tamasiki bi kitabillah Wa bi sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam and the question was, what are some practical steps to deal with racism? So many of the fudala are pondering and contemplating and thinking about such a complex issue. And I wanted to offer some humble suggestions on what my view and how we can advance and go forward as a Muslim community in dealing with these issues that have been since the beginning of time. So first and for foremost, the concept of racism, it can be defined as prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. So what we see in that definition, we see that it denotes prejudice, discriminating, discrimination, you know, to distinguish between people, and, or antagonism. So antagonism is, is a proactive way of being aggressive or verbally aggressive. It's an action of exhibiting this concept of racism which is often more violent or more harmful and the final aspect or pillar of that definition is the belief that one's own race is superior another definition that we could use as a working definition the belief that all members of each race possess possess characteristics abilities or qualities specific to that race, especially so as to distinguish it as inferior or superior to another race or races. If we're honest with ourselves, in accordance with those definitions, and there are countless definitions, it just depends on where your sources are, but we know that human beings distinguish between one another. And distinguishing is not the problem, but it's the superiority and the inferiority, which is problematic, and the aggressive tendencies towards others based upon their race or their culture or social position or social status, etc. So these are the things which are problematic, and they're problematic for the believers. They are not in accordance with Islam, and they are disgraceful traits and characteristics, but I think we know this. Everyone knows this, but implementing this Practicing this, actualizing this, is very difficult for most of the people. Most of the people, they love to think that they are the best. And that what comes from their body does not smell. Akramakum Allah. Forgive me for this, but I wanted to be a bit more open in what we're talking about. So, most of the people, or I should say some of the people... They have this these concepts, or many of the people have the concepts, uh, of, are infected and affected to one level or another. The most, the worst manifestations of this is when it comes to believing you're superior and acting in violent forms by violence, killing what's happening to the Rohingya, what happened to African Americans throughout the history of America, what happened to the Native Americans uh, in America and, and indigenous peoples around the world and between many of the European nations and what still goes on. That we've seen this, this is a trait of the children of Adam that this racism and this arrogance, beginning with the shaitan, who was arrogant when asked to make sujood to Adam. فَسَجِدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ So, the malaika 
they made sujood to Adam as they were asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but uh, 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 the Iblis, Shaitan, refused. وَاسْتَكْبَرَ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And so that was his action of disbelief and disobedience to Allah and kufr. Billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From his istikbar, his arrogance. So it shows us that this is a sifa min sifat of iblis, to be arrogant towards others. So one of the things we can do is try to attack that trait within ourselves when it begins to manifest itself. Because we're human, we're frail, we're weak. The Prophet ﷺ said, Adam All the children of Adam commit sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. So since we all have frail, we have different traits, we may, at some time, the shaitan may say, hey, you know, so-and-so is very white, very pale, you know, nah. you know, you, you may have some arrogance or, or something may come, or vice versa. So-and-so is from Asia, so-and-so is from this one, so-and-so is from this one. And you may, that may become a, 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 a point of reference for that person in belittling that person. So we become infected. So the best thing is within yourselves, battle that. Fight that. Because we're weak. Allah wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَصْلَحُ بَيْنَ أَخْوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Verily the believers are nothing else than brothers. So make reconciliation between your brothers and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. So if you want mercy, when you see this prejudice being manifested between the believers, then you should strive to make reconciliation between them and not assist them in evil and the traits of evil. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, Ya Yuladina Amanu, La Yaskar Kuman Min Kum, Asa and Yukunu Khaira Minhum, Wala Nisa Un Min Nisa. Asa an yukunna khayr min hunna wala telmizu anfusukum wala tanabizu bil alqab bi'sal ism al fusuk ba'd al iman wa man lam yatub fa ulaika hum al zalimun Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem O you who believe, let not a group scoff at, at uh, one another. It may be that the latter are better than the former, nor let some women scoff at other women. It may be that the latter are better than the former, nor defame one another, nor insult one another by nicknames. How bad it is to insult one's brother after having iman, faith. And whosoever does not repent, then such are indeed the volley moon. Those, those are wicked sinners. How many times, we can count, count, we can't count the many times we've experienced it from every nation and culture. Between, sometimes something as simple as, huh, look at her, she's, huh, huh, huh. look at this one. You know, all of these kind of ways of distinguishing between one another and the traits, the physical traits of one another, which are often associated with racial stereotypes, that this is a type of boom. It's a type of sinfulness and wickedness. And it's a type of racism. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabihi al kareem Ya yuan nas inna khalakana kum min dhakran wa unta wa ja'alna kum shu'uban wa qaba'il li ta'arrafu inna akramakum inda Allah yatqakum inna Allah alimun khabir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem 
O mankind, so here Allah Tabarak Ta'ala is addressing who? Mankind, Bani Adam, all of us. We have created you from a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you with Allah is the one who has taqwa. Verily, Allah is all-knowing and all-aware. And when we talk about taqwa habitifillah, as we said countless times, taqwa Allah this means to adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning His awamir, awamirillah, and of course, the commandments of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, and it means avoiding the prohibitions of Allah azza wa jal, as articulated by the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. So this is taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that the one who is the strongest deen, the one who is upon istiqamah, the one who calls to the book and the sunnah, practicing in it, and following, uh, f following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obedience to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, they're the best. It's not the one with the lighter skin. It's not the one with the dark, dark chocolate skin. It's not the one with a, uh, uh, you know, the most beautiful eyes, or this or that. But it's the one who possesses the taqwa, who has the most taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguishes based upon taqwa Allah azza wa jal. How did you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Inna Allah la yandru ala sahlikum wa la ila surakum wa lakin yandru ala qulubukum wa amalakum kama qala nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, Verily Allah does not look to your, your bodies and your, your forms, but he looks to your hearts, your deeds and your hearts. He looks to your deeds and your hearts. So these things are known. Imam Sa'di mentioned something very beneficial regarding this last ayah about Yayu and Nas in the Khalakanukum min Dakarwa Unta ila Akhra ayah. He mentions, he says, Yukhbiru Ta'ala Ennuhu Khalaka Bani Adam. من أصل واحد وجنس واحد وكلهم من ذكر وأنثى ويرجعون جميعهم إلى آدم وهوى ولكن الله تعالى بث منهم رجال كثير والنساء وفرقهم وجعلهم شعوبا وقبائل أي قبائل صغار وكبار so إمام uh, Sa'di, he mentions in the tafsir of this ayat, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that he has created the children of Adam from one origin, from one race, meaning race of people. And all of them are uh, from a male and a female. They all go back to Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, and our mother Hawa, alayhi, alayhi salam. Lakin Allah Ta'ala, however Allah sent from them, meaning from their loins, uh, men, many men and women. And he divided between them and divided them into nations and tribes. Some of them are, are big tribes, some of them are small tribes. And this was in order that they would know one another. And they will not be uh, by themselves. Because if they were by themselves, لم يحصل بذلك التعرف الذي يترتب عليه التناصر والتعاون والتوارث والقيام بحقوق الأقارب. So he says, then then you wouldn't have that maqsid, that intent, if they don't know each other. If they know each other, are a part of knowing each other, it has many, many benefits. Like, they can assist one another. They can cooperate with one another. They inherit from one another. And they can give the rights of their ties of kinship. And he said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us into nations and tribes in order that we would get we would implement those implement those those uh, those maqasid. 
And at the end, he says, وَلَكِنَ الْقَرَمْ بِتَقْوَى However, the most important thing is one's taqwa. So lastly, يَا حَبَتِفِ As far as some practical steps, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Is first, it has to be through spiritual development. Meaning, we have to inculcate within ourselves the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands us with. We have to have taqwa Allah We have to reform our hearts. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّفِي جَزِدْ مُضْغَ وِذَا إِذَا إِنَّفِي جَزِدْ مُضْغَ إِذَا صَلَحَ صَلَحَ إِذَا فَسَدَ فَسَدَ جَزِدَ كُلَّ وَإِذَا صَلَحَ صَلَحَ جَزِدَ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ قَلْبِ The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. And if it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, then the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. So beginning with our heart, taking an active, uh, being aware of racism, being aware of discrimination, learning about it, so that way we can inculcate within our children not to be a part of that to not distinguish based upon that and that requires fighting our old ancient stereotypes i know many people who are even from ahl sunnah and sometimes we've seen some of the ugliest racism from them you know and they're unaware that's the worst thing they're not even aware that they believe and they don't even consciously maybe know that they believe that they have a superiority with whiteness this is true and I can give examples, but I won't. And we have those that believe they are better because they're Arab. Or those who believe they are better because they're African or African American or what. We have the, the examples are, are ample. The examples are ample. So it has to be begin by inculcating within yourself and fighting jihad and nafs against those that disease. Secondly, Ahabatifillah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala infants, a ta'arif, to, is knowing one another, getting to know one another. That's the only way. When you travel around the world, I've met South Africans in my job, for example, black ones and, and, and white ones. And I see the differences. And when I speak with some of them in private, they tell me about the legacy of apartheid and how it even affects them now. And you can see it. But now they're forced out of their comfort zone because they're now in a multicultural environment working with people from around the world and people of dark skin that they now have to engage with. And by knowing one another, it helps to overcome some of those prejudices. Not always, but that is the step. Those are just some ideas that came to mind. And we ask Allah the, the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our Bible.